Want to learn how to shoot top-down videos and photos just like this? Well, in today's episode of Breakdown, I'm going to walk you through the entire setup so that you could shoot top-down videos like a pro. Welcome back to Breakdown. My name is Miguel Quiles. This is the first episode of Breakdown in 2021, and we're doing something a little bit different than what we would normally do. I'm here in the studio. I was getting ready to do an unboxing for this uh, LED light that an Amazon seller had sent me to do a review for. And I thought to myself, you know, I think I really wanna kind of do this like top-down unboxing style, uh, reminiscent of what you would see from MKBHD or Jonathan Morrison or Unbox Therapy. Uh, but, you know, I, I noticed that there's not a lot of people out there that talk about the setup for that. Like, it, it seems really simple, like you just put a camera above a table and turn on a light and you start shooting. But if you do that, you start to find that it's a little tricky. It's not that simple. It is simple, but it's not as simple as you might think in the beginning. So with that being said, I'm going to walk you through the entire setup for how this is done really simply using a single light. Okay, so here we are. This is a wide look at the uh, studio setup here. And uh, we're gonna kind of dive in a little bit deeper and take a look at each individual product uh, so that you can set this up on your own. Let's start this off first talking about the surface that we're gonna be using. Um, I've got an Ikea table that uh, is just like a really cheap kind of basic table. Uh, and then on top of that, I have a roll of Savage Seamless Paper. And so this is the same kind of paper that you would see, um, you know, using it as a background for photo shoots and things like that. But what I like about this one is that it's 26 inches wide. It's not like the big four footer um, or, or, you know, nine footer. Uh, it's really great for shooting this like top down style. You could see I basically have it on a backdrop stand and then I just rolled it out over the top of the table. And then on top of the table, of course, I have the light that I'm gonna be doing the unboxing and kind of just sharing my initial impressions. Then I have all these little, what we'll call tchotchkes, as my mom likes to call them, um, on top of the table. And so this just kind of adds this um, visual element and visual interest uh, to your top-down set. I like to choose things that are kind of colorful. You could add products, lenses, plants, uh, whatever, you know, anything that just kind of spices up the uh, top-down shot. And then moving on, you'll see here, um, I actually have a 27, I believe, 27-inch uh, Dell monitor. It's just an old monitor that I had laying around the studio. And I have that connected via HDMI to my overhead camera, which we'll get back to here in a second. But this monitor is super, super clutch because while you're shooting these like top-down videos or you're taking these photos, you're going to want to be able to kind of see what the results are, you know, as you're kind of moving the product around the table, uh, you want to see exactly what's happening and that monitor is going to allow us to do that. So that's connected through HDMI. Uh, and then we have our camera, which is boomed overhead. So let's talk about what the uh, support is first. We have a Kupo, uh, I believe it's the Junior Roller. I did a video about this stand not too long ago. Actually, it was long ago. It was probably like two years ago. I'll link to that in the card above. But um, it's the Junior Roller with a little boom arm. And then of course, it's sandbagged, highly recommended. Um, and then just above, we have the uh, camera setup. And so, uh, let's actually punch in a little bit closer so I can show you what that is. Okay, so here we are. This is the camera that I'm using for the overhead setup. It's actually the uh, Sony Alpha 1, and I have the 24 to 70 f2.8 G Master lens on there. Uh, I chose to go with this setup for a few reasons. The first being that the camera is able to shoot 8K. I was kind of interested to see what 8K would look like and uh, see how difficult it would be to edit those files. Uh, so I'm going to be shooting the uh, top down video in 8K. And then the 24 to 70 lens really helps you to be able to kind of zoom in if uh, you wanted to kind of punch in into some kind of details and you wanted to do it manually, you could just basically twist the lens and you could do that. Um, and then you might be wondering what this little or long arm here is. And uh, so what's actually holding the camera, I've got just a regular tripod head. You know, of course you could use whatever uh, tripod head you have available. Um, but 
what I ended up doing was I had this little piece here, which I believe was made by Kupo as well. Uh, all of the products will all be linked in the description of the video to make it a little easier. Um, but what this allows you to do is to connect or to thread a tripod head. But instead of putting this directly onto this, which I could have done, um, I chose to put this little Vanguard multi-mount, which is really slick because you could actually have multiple mounting points. So I could have mounted this same tripod piece here. Of course, I mounted it onto this piece. And then up above, there's another one. Uh, but what's nice is there's a little kind of a handle here and I'm able to actually extend uh, this pole. It could actually kind of go up and down. So rather than having to um, adjust these handles here to basically lower or raise this entire camera setup, I could actually do it here just by loosening up. Uh, where's it at? There it goes. <laughs> loosening this up right here. And then that will allow me to basically raise and to lower uh, this entire camera setup. So now that we've taken a look at that, let's actually take a look at the light that we're using for this. So the light modifier is actually a large uh, softbox that is made by Nanlight. Really beautiful, huge. I mean, I don't know if you could tell from the video, big, huge, beautiful light. Uh, that single light is basically what's lighting the entirety of this uh, overhead setup, getting these really nice soft shadows. And um, I'm gonna walk around here. I've gotta kind of make my way through this very messy studio today. So I'm gonna pause for a second while I walk around to the backside to show you the light. All right, now that I have safely walked around this entire crazy setup, uh, this is the Nanlight FS300. This is a uh, really awesome LED light, very powerful, very bright. Um, it's a Bowen style light, so you could actually connect uh, Bowen's mount modifiers to this light. And then uh, you can see it's really, really simple to use. There's basically only two knobs, uh, one to be able to adjust your brightness. This one actually allows you to cycle through some of the different effects that the light has, like the police lights and things of that nature. We're not gonna be using that for this setup. And of course, an on off button, really simple, really nice, easy light uh, and very affordable too. I believe this light is right around three to $400. Uh, again, I'll have the links for everything in the description, but uh, very affordable for the amount of power that it puts out. Uh, this is actually what I've been using to light my YouTube videos recently. And it is replacing my Aperture 120D, which I believe cost somewhere around like six, $700 when I bought it. So for about half the price, I get double the amount of power and it's just a really beautiful uh, quality of light. So. That's our setup, and now we're actually gonna do the unboxing so that you can see what this actually looks like being used in action. All right, now that we've covered the entire setup, let's actually get into the unboxing, and I have a really exciting announcement, so make sure you stay tuned through the entirety of this unboxing because at the end, I've got something really, really cool, being that this is the first episode of Breakdown in 2021. But anyway, let's get into the unboxing for the uh, Digital Photo Tree Frog IP67 Waterproof RGB Pocket LED Light. Holy cow, that's like the longest possible name <laughs> uh, for a product. But anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and start this uh, unboxing here. And uh, let's pull that, kind of put this out of the way here for a second. All right, so here is the, uh, the light, comes in a Really nice kind of hard protective uh, package here, which is kind of nice, flip this over. Uh, so of course we have our instruction manual. Let's see, I always like looking at the instruction manuals for things like this to see if uh, you know things are kind of written in a really easy to understand fashion. And it appears to be okay. Yeah, appears to be okay, cool. Put that there. So here is the, uh, here's the light. So right now, if you see me, I'm gonna switch cameras here so you could see me. <laughs> um, I'm actually looking up at the monitor just to make sure that the product is in focus um, and it appears to be in focus, which is really great. Uh, using the Alpha One, using uh, center uh, focus so that that way I can make sure that, you know, anything in the center of the frame is gonna be sharp. But anyway, let's get back to the unboxing. So looking at the product, there's a bunch of uh, LEDs, which hopefully you can see uh, pretty clearly. 
We'll flip this over here. Digital photo tree frog branding. Uh, some colors here, which I'm not sure if those light up. We're gonna check that in a second. Um, it comes with this rubber kind of protective casing, which uh, I guess I'll go ahead and take off so we can see what it actually looks like here. But a uh, really nice kind of red accent uh, around the edges of the light, which look pretty cool. Uh, seems to be pretty sturdy, pretty well built. Um, USB-C here on the side for your uh, charging, which is nice. Uh, you've got some threads here to be able to mount this, um, which I'll look in there because I see that there's an accessory for that, but you can thread that there. Uh, let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Holding the power button, we get that digital photo uh, icon, and here we go. So it's lit up. Probably can't see the color, maybe you can, I don't know. But uh, this is a red color right now. And it looks like if I, so right now it's on HSI, H is for hue, S is for saturation. And uh, so if I, I'll just keep my hand under so maybe you can see the color as it changes. But as I change the hue, it looks like it's gonna change the color. Um, it seems like it takes a little bit for it to actually go through the process of changing colors. I don't know if you can see that here on the screen. But uh, to go from you know 90% or so to like one, uh, it takes a little while. But yeah, so there you go. Uh, if you hit this FN button, if you're a Sony shooter, you're familiar with that. It's like a function button. Um, you could switch down to saturation, and now I could change the saturation of that light. And it's actually changing the color as well, which is pretty cool. So now we've got more of a, a bluish color. Uh, I don't know if you could tell from the video because we have so much light here in the studio, but man, this sucker is bright, like crazy, crazy bright. Uh, so bright, in fact, I just looked at it and I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> anyway, um, so you've got that. Uh, clicking this M button here, you've got your um, ability to be able to change the color temperature of your light. So it goes from, let's see, let's take this thing all the way up, 8,500 Kelvin and it goes down to, doo -doo -doo -doo. wow, 2,500 Kelvin. All right, so pretty good range there. Again, very, very, very bright. Uh, it looks like you also have uh, different scenes. So of course your uh, fireworks scene here, not sure what that is. Hmm, interesting. Uh, okay, so let's just go through the scenes here. We've got our paparazzi mode. Flash mode, here's candle. I guess this is like a thunderstorm or something or a computer screen, I don't know, can you tell? There you go, HSI, so it's just gonna keep uh, pulsing different colors. Same thing here. Now we've got lightning one, or sorry, lightning two and lightning one. We've got our uh, fire truck, ambulance, and of course, police car. So pretty nice, very, very bright, uh, seemingly very well built uh, piece of equipment here. Um, you can change your uh, brightness up top, and of course, your power button is right here. All right, so that's the light. You have a couple of modifiers actually as well. So it looks like they include a uh, diffusion panel for you to be able to diffuse the light if you needed to. And uh, something that you don't often see with these lights, uh, they included this grid, a honeycomb grid. So if you wanted to really kind of uh, focus the light onto a surface or your subject, whatever, uh, it does have the grid. And then uh, looking at the rest of the stuff here, so uh, this is what you would use to be able to mount this light to uh, the hot shoe of a camera or the cold shoe on a uh, cage. Of course, I was just doing it the wrong way, but there you go. Perfect. All right. Now you can loosen that up and you can basically modify the uh, angle and position of the light. This is all included in the package. And then, of course, our USB-C cable, which is really nice to see these newer products. Uh, coming with USB-C because that's where the world is moving to. Uh, you have an adapter as well. So you have a type A to USB-C 
uh, adapter, which is nice to see in the package as well. Little wrist strap. And then last but not least, we have the uh, little tripod. So if you wanted to set this thing up on a table, uh, real simple, real easy to do. And uh, yeah, that is everything that comes with this uh, Tree Frog Light. It is IP67 waterproof rated. So uh, this might be kind of cool to take underwater and kind of do some like underwater photo shoots. That's what I was thinking of doing with it. But I want you to think, what would you do with this product? Like, what would you do if you had it? And here's what's really cool. You have the opportunity to win one of these lights. So anytime companies will ask me to do reviews from now on, I'm gonna try my best to make sure that when they send me one, that they send me an extra one so that I can give one away to a lucky winner. So what you need to do to win, leave a comment in this video with your Instagram handle, okay? And let me know what you would shoot using this LED light. And within a week or so, I'll put the date in the description, uh, but I will choose one winner. And this is open to uh, anyone here in the US. Go ahead, leave your Instagram handle for a chance to win. And I apologize for those that are worldwide. Unfortunately, there are a lot of rules and restrictions with doing giveaways uh, in certain parts of the world and in certain countries, and it makes it just a pain in the neck. So I apologize to those of you that are outside of the US. Maybe one day these governments can figure out how to you know, do this so that we can give away some free stuff here at the breakdown. So anyway, with that being said, if you have any questions about the light or of course the top down set that we were using to do this unboxing, please leave it in the comment section below. While you're there, do me a favor, please subscribe to the channel and leave a like uh, as it appeases the YouTube algorithm and you're gonna to wanna to subscribe because I drop new videos here all the time talking about photography, videography, content creation. So if you're a YouTuber and you're trying to level up your game, I've been on YouTube for, geez, almost eight or nine years. Uh, I produced hundreds of videos at this point and I wanna share some of that knowledge with you. So if you're into that type of thing, make sure you subscribe. And if you wanna learn more about portrait photography, make sure that you check out this episode of Breakdown, which I have handpicked just for you. I'll see you next time.